as soon as you graduate, post-graduate or somewhere you finish a PhD, immediately you may not get a job. Or sometimes it could be like you really can't go to a lab because of your family responsibilities. Maybe you are in a different city and the jobs are in a different city, so you cannot take up a full-time job. And that brings to a situation where you want to earn, you have the right skill set. But just because you're not at the right location, you're suffering. Well, worry no more. Today in this video, we are going to discuss some freelancing opportunities for life sciences, exclusively life science and biotech, freshers, graduates, postgraduates or PhDs. You have a plethora of opportunities thanks to the world of virtuality. You can achieve much more success just by doing some freelancing work. Now, one important thing which I want to warn you before we jump onto the freelancing bandwagon. I have a list of 14 to 15, more than 15 uh, different freelancing jobs which you can do. But let me warn you one thing. Freelancing is not a regular job. It may not have fixed income. Sometimes it can be more, sometimes it can be not nothing. It is not as easy as it sounds. However, it is worth a try, okay? I have done it and it's very rewarding. It's very enriching. You learn a lot. You meet different people online or offline, you get to work with amazing people and you work on different projects and you learn a lot. So yeah, it's a good exposure. Exposure wise, it's good, but income wise, it can be a challenge if you are only doing the freelancing job and you don't have a fixed salary job elsewhere. So that's something you have to keep in mind. Let's look at as a bachelor's or a master's or a PhD. The one thing which is completely ready is here, your mind. Your mind is completely ready with the knowledge all you have to do is use that knowledge, apply that knowledge into something which can be used by the industry. So that's the hint, okay? Now that can be multiple uh, domains. Let's start with the first one and that is scientific writing. Now scientific writing actually is in high demand because there is a lot of research going on across the globe. Now all of that research has to be put down into words, right? So it could be writing research papers, grants, proposals, patent applications, at articles for science journals, and reviewing also. So th there are various scientific writing projects which keeps coming. Now, people can, uh, you know, debate that, okay, in future AI is going to take over this part. Definitely, yes, they are going to take up. But as long as they have not overtaken it, you can still, with the help of AI, you can still make it better and you can still do this job. So it's not that it will be completely obsolete, but yeah. Uh, if you are very good in using AI, then scientific writing will further help you grow in your career. So this is one thing which I see as a growing uh, field if in case you know how to use the uh, artificial intelligence also. Now, the second one which I have for you is tutoring or online courses. So many a times you are in some other part of the world and uh, of course there is no job opportunities in that city and of course going to a place especially for women suppose you have a child to take care so you will not get more than say two hours per day to work but you still want to earn and you know feel good professionally and of course you will get to write uh, this on your cv so you can apply for jobs in various edtech companies like biotechnica and work part-time as a teacher as an online tutor on various subjects various topics in various uh, areas of, of your interest and expertise now uh, given the kind of edtech revolution which our country is going on right now definitely this is a booming area but let me warn you one thing this particular job is on the verge of saturation right now so you when you apply you may not get the job but if you are really good in teaching this sector can be highly rewarding for you. Now, the third one which I have for you is research consultant. Now, consulting is another avenue which can, uh, you know, which you can effectively utilize uh, your advanced skills and knowledge which you learn during your bachelor's, master's and PhD. Now, biotech and life science companies often seek a third party view or a point of view. But, you know, for becoming a research consultant, you need to have the reputation and personal branding you have to do. Because, you know, why would Biocon come to you? instead of going to someone who is experienced. So you have to start with small consulting work in the biotech industry and then slowly scale it up. And this is where uh, we can help you a lot. Uh, Biotechnica can definitely help you. You can always reach out to me at Shekhar at Biotechnica Rutavarchi. I'll definitely help you. Why biotech companies will come to you? They'll come to you for specific research projects. You know, some new projects they want to take up, which is which was not a part of the existing plan and uh, they don't have the budget. So they want to just outsource it to someone. Or maybe it's some kind of a uh, review of the current literature and 
coming up with some ideas for a new revenue model or maybe uh, legal firms can sometimes hire you as a consultant to review the technical aspect of the uh, agreements and the you know projects so that is where research consultant comes into picture again you will have to do a lot of personal branding to get into this so that is third uh, that which is a research consultant now the fourth one is very interesting amazing uh, thing and even biotechnica hires a lot of these and uh, in fact we don't hire freelancers we hire full timers also so that is called as medical or scientific illustrator now you see biology cannot be visualized without a microscope right even electron microscope or some something powerful right but for the ease of use for the ease of knowledge and the for, for the ease of understanding we need to design diagrams which is easily understandable so maybe the diagram of heart or liver or uh, you know how the pancreas work or how the cell membrane works or how the the krebs cycle is working inside the uh, suppose uh, the mitochondria how exactly it's working how the ribosome is working how the nucleus is acting so you know medical or a scientific illustrator makes it easy for the medical and science students to understand visualize and um you know recreate it on a pen and paper so that is where this is a amazing area the kind of jobs you can get is um in textbooks uh, various textbooks are written almost every day scientific journals research presentations and more and you can uh, use your research background uh, to create accurate and relevant illustrations and diagrams which the industry may like now what would you require for this you'll require a knowledge of digital art okay like photoshop or various other uh, animation animation is also one uh, medical or scientific animator that is another uh, job which you can freelancing you can do so you have a degree in biotech or uh, biology and then you learn how to animate and then you combine both of them so this is another way of using medical and scientific animator medical and scientific illustrator okay so i told you uh, five till now now the sixth one is patent analyst now patent analyst is where you use your in depth technical knowledge of biotechnology microbiology biochemistry and all this and you review the patent applications and find out for uh, some kind of infringement which might this might be doing or some kind of um, you can do a review of the existing patent and find out how this patent application is similar or dissimilar or you know and a lot of companies will hire you for this so this is a, a patent analyst analyst come freelance consultant who will be hired to analyze their patent and find out where is it overlap and why the patent may not be granted and find out those loopholes and plug and fix that so it's more of a lawyer kind of a job but yeah it, you need a real sharp mind to for this because patent drafting patent anal analyzing and patent uh, finalization and then finally applying um, that's a great skill set which you can learn and which you can apply and various big companies can approach you for this and uh, you can build a reputation of, for yourself and sell it to the companies for crores of rupees so patent analyst is one thing which you can in fact in future you can have your own consulting firm for patent analysis also now having said that now the seventh one which i have for you is something which you have studied as a subject which is biostatistician right biostatistics which you learned now as you know life science is nothing but ma but mathematics the entire thing is dependent on atgc right so whether it is clinical trials genetics or uh, epidemiology everywhere you need a biostatistician so what would you need for a, becoming a biostatistician freelancer is having sharp analytical skills and on the top of it you will be able to offer all of these services and you will be able to at you know interpret and analyze complex clinical data biological data from researchers from pharmaceutical companies as well as government agencies so they will approach you okay you, again for all of this remember one thing for any kind of freelancer you have to do a lot of personal branding because you are the brand so the people will search for you on google or wherever and they will reach out to you they will email you they'll contact you and then they will send across their data after signing a non disclosure agreement and then you analyze the data and give your report so this is where biostatistician will be a great um freelancing opportunity for all of you if you want to take this up now the next one which i have is data analytics or data analysis now it is similar to biostatistician but not exactly biostatistics now if you are pr proficient with working on big data large data sets and you have a strong understanding of statistical tools then you can offer data analysis as a service now data analysis as a service now daas now what happens here 
you will be getting data whether it is sales data whether it is biological data clinical data whatever data comes to you you can use artificial intelligence also and you should have excellent microsoft excel skills and then you can use that to make predictions to uh, understand patterns and find the fine prints where you can change things now for example i'll tell you uh, there is a courier company in us called as ups so ups um, you know designed their data analysis department and they use artificial intelligence also and they found out that each time their cab takes a right turn there is more petrol consumption so they decided that we will not take a right instead we will only deliver towards their left so if if i'm driving i'll take the left and deliver there i'll not take a right so this way they started avoiding and they realized that within one year they saved billions of dollars in diesel so what happened here somebody found out that yes this data reflects something that each time somebody is taking a right turn he is consuming more diesel so how can we reduce that this didn't just increase the decrease the consumption of diesel it increased the profitability of ups company and this is the power of data analytics and you can make a career in this as well now the next one which you have is content generator now have you seen a medical say medicine or a medical device i'm sure it comes with a manual or a user manual right so this user manual get has to be created so somebody has to do that so using your biological uh, you know knowledge you can approach pharmaceutical companies small as well as large and then you can generate these manuals for them using you know your expertise and of course artificial intelligence so content generator is another exciting field where you can get in at the end i'm going to tell you how to get in but right now let me enumerate all the pointers so the next one which i have for you is virtual research assistant now what exactly is that so basically researchers work in lab right but after they are done with their uh, lab work they come up with the data now they are really tired maybe or uh, they want to outsource the analysis of that research data to someone who is an expert so you can do that you may be involved in uh, managing project timelines also coordinating with the other team members and your expertise can come handy in biotech as well as life science labs so basically you are not in the lab but you are managing with different teams using data looking at the attendance and looking at the productivity looking at so basically this will be a game changer and you can approach lot of ceos and they would be interested in hiring you as a virtual research assistant and of course linkedin comes handy there the next one 11th one for you is bioinformatics specialist this is a, again another freelancing opportunity for you where the world of bioinformatics is something which which is this sits inside your computer so you get the data you analyze using bioinformatics tools and you get give your output and for that you need to have excellent bioinformatics skills which you can always learn at biotechnica now the next one which i have is for the 12th one is virtual biotech advisor now what happens here is as a biotech starter or even established companies they look for research direction they look for product development and uh, ease of uh, manufacturing and they need somebody who can help in strategies marketing sales and um, building the supply chain and manufacturing and somebody who has advanced knowledge who can act as a virtual advisor so now this is something which you cannot do upfront like a fresher but definitely over a period of time of say 20 years or 30 years once so you have worked in the industry you will gain all that knowledge and then you can um assist new startups in doing that i do that for a lot of companies i am working as a biotech virtual advisor for a lot of uh, companies and they pay me for doing this so you know the complex landscape of biotechnology and life science is something wherein you have to first gain experience and then only you can implement so this is something which you should know virtual biotech advisor is one such field The next one is a clinical trial consultant. This is thirteenth one. If your experience or knowledge encompasses clinical trials, like you have worked in a field and you have the idea of how things work, then you can work as a freelancer for CROs, pharmaceutical and biotech companies, research institutions, and your responsibility could include designing the trial protocols, data analysis, ensuring compliance with the regulations. interpreting the results for scientific and commercial audience and then finally making sure that all of this is compiled in an organized manner and delivered within the timeline so this is where clinical trial consultant comes into picture next one is again very exciting and that is biotech sales and marketing consultant the other day only uh, one of my student approached and said, said that sir you must be needing lot of help with uh, admissions of the students in our 
in uh, Biotechnica. So can I assist? So basically, they are trying to help me in the sales and marketing division. Many people approach me for social media marketing. Like, okay, I can do the social media marketing for Biotechnica. So this is something you have a knack of sales and marketing along with uh, Biotechnica Life Sciences ex expertise. You can utilize that to become a biotech sales and marketing consultant and do all the things virtually. And now what all things you can do? You can help in product positioning, market research, competitive analysis, sales strategy development, implementation, and all of this with your deep industry knowledge. And of course, a bit of innovation and AI. You can do this easily. That's the 14th one for you. The 15th one is scientific editor or a proofreader. So there are a lot of, lot of journals, like I said. Now, all these journals will require somebody, some PhD holder or a postdoc to work as a proofreader or a scientific editor. So you can become that. You can... Um, read scientific manuscripts, theses, papers, research proposals, grant applications, and it requires a trained eye. And AI also cannot do that right now. So you should be somebody who has a lot of clarity, consistency, purpose, adherence uh, to the guidelines, and a knack to catch for errors. And you know, you should know this actually that 99% of the proposals get rejected not because they were bad proposals, but they, are, they were badly formatted and the communication was not direct. So that is where this will come handy. So that is 15th one, scientific editor or a proofreader. Now, the last point which I wanted to make uh, to all of you is, see, you have to first identify your passion. These are the 15, there are 30 more which I can make. But uh, first thing is you have to identify the passion and then uh, identify your niche, what particular area you want to specialize in. Then market yourself, do personal branding to uh, do a lot of networking on LinkedIn as well as Biotechnica. Develop a portfolio, preferably a portfolio PDF and a portfolio website. And of course, a video. You must do that. And then set competitive rates. Don't start charging crores in, on the first day. Start small, approach small startups and simplify things for them. They will definitely become your regular customers. And then never ever stop innovating and learning because that's all about freelancing. Now, it seems difficult, but it's not difficult. As you gain experience, you will learn that freelancing is a rewarding opportunity, uh, both money-wise as well as learning-wise. But at the same time, it can be tedious if you're not able to manage your regular job with a freelancing job. So that's all about today's video. I hope you found it well valuable. If you have any questions, comments, or anything you would like to know, put them down in the comment section and I can definitely help you with freelancing opportunities in the biotech and pharma sector. And if you're already doing that, please get in touch with me so that I can help you introduce to my network so that my network also gets benefit from your services. And of course, you can earn more. So see you soon in the next one. Till then, keep shining. Bye-bye.